Hello, this is Britt Caswell with another example video. In this video, I'm covering example 4 from section 5-2 in the Savas Realize Algebra 1 textbook. The goal of this video is to apply a piecewise defined function. So we are, we are looking at a real world scenario about why a piecewise function might be used. So in this problem, there's a gym owner who wants to purchase custom wristbands for a marketing promotion. She thinks she's going to need about 75 bands. Her insistent, er, assistant insists that ordering over 100 wristbands will be less expensive than ordering 75. All right, so sometimes it's cheaper to buy in bulk. You might have heard that. And so it says, how can the assistant convince the gym owner? So what I would actually recommend here is I would recommend creating a piecewise function. So in this example, I'm going to show you how to take this scenario and I'm going to show you how to, how to graph it and to write the equations. Now remember, if you have a piecewise function, your notation is always going to start out with f of x equals and then a bracket. Now what you see here is you could see that there's three tiers for cost of the wristband. So I'm going to have three equations written out here. All right, now the, the first equation is going to have the domain from 0 to 50. So the way I'm going to write that is I'm going to write 0 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 50, like that. There's a comma too. All right, now this next one goes from 51 to 100. And so I'm going to write that out the same way. 51 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 100. And then over 100 wristbands, or when x is greater than 100, 50 cents each. Now notice here that we, um, we don't put the equal to bar on the inequality, right? Because it's more than 100. If you buy 100, you're, you're back in this other tier. So now looking at this, we, we have some kind of rate. All right, so it says $2 each plus $20 shipping. All right, now this shipping cost is a flat amount. Okay, as long as you're buying within that range, you're going to pay that amount for shipping. And then here where it says $2 each, that's a rate. So whenever you have a rate, that's your slope. And then whenever you have a flat amount, that's your y-intercept. So the equation here would be $2 times x plus 20 for shipping. And we'll graph that here in just a moment. All right, so now our second equation, our rate is $1. So I would have 1x plus $10 in shipping. So that 10 would be my y-intercept. And then here, our third one says that it's 50 cents each plus free shipping. So for the 50 cents each, I'm going to call that one half because it's half of a dollar. All right, you could also call it 0.5 if you want to, but slopes are easier when they're fractions. And when you have the free shipping, I don't have a y-intercept, right? My y-intercept would be zero. So it would be crossing right here on the, on the axis. Okay, so now we need to go through and decide kind of how we're breaking up our axes here, okay? Um, this graph paper that I use is 10 by 10. So I know that in each direction it goes 10. So I'm trying to decide how I want uh, to count by. So I think on my y-axis, um, I know my y-intercept is 20. But then I have a slope of 2x. So if I go up to 20, um, I won't actually have any room to talk about it in quadrant 1. right? I'm not going to go back this way because I'm not going to have a negative number of wristbands. So I need to make sure this is more than 20. So uh, I think we'll count by 4. And so that should give me the ability, oops, I know how to count by four, I promise. 
but counting by four is going to allow me to kind of split it up a little bit, um, but still not be too uh, squished together. My brain wants to count by twos, though, if you can tell right there. Good lord. 28, 32, 36. So there we go. So there's our y-axis. Now our x-axis, it goes up to 100. Do you see that? So for here, I'm probably going to make it count by tens. So here we go. Counting by tens, trying to keep it as neat as possible. Alrighty. So this first part, it says 2x plus 20. So my y-intercept is at 20, and I have a slope of 2. Now, understand that just because I've scaled my graph doesn't mean that I can't use my boxes. All right? So I'm still going to go up by 2 and run by 1. And it's still going to graph kind of like this. Now, this is going from, um, ooh, I planned this poorly as well, right? Because think about this, if I reach 100 and I need to show greater than 100, it's going to be off my graph, isn't it? So before I change that, um, let's rescale our graph just to make sure that we're counting by numbers that are going to work. Um, let's do 15s. So I have 15... 30, 45, 60, 75, 90, 105, 120. There we go. And so now I have enough room for it to, to go past the 100. Anyway, so as I was saying, you can still use the um, rise to run one. Okay, it's not going to mess us up. Now, an important thing here is to recognize your endpoints. All right, now I only need to go from 0 to 50, which is about right here. Okay. And then at 0 is where this other endpoint is. And when I'm talking about 0 to 50, I'm talking about on the x-axis, right? Because we have our domain right here. Now remember, the endpoints or end arrows are very important on these graphs. So both of my endpoints are filled in because it can be equal to on both of these. So now with the green, my y-intercept is at 10, which is here. And then I have a slope of 1. So my graph, if I'm careful about how I draw it, um, I'm going up by one each time. It's roughly like that. Now, I only need from 51 to 100 on here. So now 100 is going to be here, just shy of 105. And I'm filling in that circle because it can equal the 100. And it's only supposed to start at 51. Okay, so it's one more away from here. Or away from the blue. So they're going to look like they're in the same spot. And so that's why we rely on the equation to tell us that they're not overlapping. Because if, if this one had a 50 and there were two possible inputs for 50, our graph wouldn't work. It wouldn't be a function. But because there's a gap from 50 to 51, this graph works. So now the other one is the 1 half x. All right, so it starts at 0, um, rises 1, and runs 2. So it's going to look roughly like that. And we only need the parts where x is greater than 100. Now where it says greater than 100, you have to use a, a hollow circle for that. Okay, it can't be filled in. And the reason why is because at 100, it, it goes to the other tier, right? And so then the other end going to be an arrow because it doesn't cap off at a maximum. So here you can see your three rates. And so 
by purchasing over 100, you can see that the rate is lower or that the slope is lower here. And so that's what I'm going to type here. By purchasing over 100 wristbands, the rate slope is lower. Therefore, the cost per item is cheaper. And do you see how the, how the maximum here is a lot smaller than over here? All right, so then they go through and they actually give us the equation. Okay, so here's the same, um, the same step function that I created, right? And it says, what is the difference in cost between one order of 200 wristbands, two orders of 100 wristbands, and four orders of 50 wristbands? So let's go ahead and let's try that. So if I'm ordering 200 wristbands, I'm looking at the X is greater than 100 range. So that's like the green range here. All right, so I'm going to find F of 200. So again, because my x value is more than 100, I'm using this bottom tier. And so where the x is in that equation, I'm going to plug in a 200. So f of 200 would then be $100. Okay, so one order of 200 wristbands is $100. And so I'm going to actually type that out just to remind myself here in just a moment. Because if you all know me, I'm super forgetful about that. So one order of 200 wristbands costs $100. So now then we have two orders of 100 wristbands each. So what I'm going to do is this is going to now move me into this kind of red zone because if I order 100 wristbands, I'm paying this amount. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find F of 100 and then I'm going to multiply that number by 2. All right, so let's start with the F of 100. So the F of 100 is 100 plus 10. And then, of course, if I'm multiplying that by the 2, I'd put a 2 here. So 100 plus 10 is 110. So I'm looking at 2 times 110, which is $220. So if I go to write a little note to myself here, I'm going to say two orders of 100 wristbands each would cost $220. See, so you're buying the same amount of wristbands, but because you're not buying it in bulk, you're, you're paying more money here. This is why companies like um, Walmart versus Sam's Club, for example, um, can sell things in bulk and it ends up being cheaper. All right, so now our last one, right? They're buying four orders of 50 wristbands. So 50 wristbands would fall into this top tier. So I'm going to need to find F of 50, but I'm doing four orders of it. So I'm multiplying that amount by four, okay? So F of 50, I'm gonna take this equation. I'm gonna say two times 50 plus 20. And so that, that 50 is in there, okay, right there. And the 4, again, is coming because we're ordering 4 orders of the 50 wristbands. So here we go. So 2 times 50 is 100 plus 20. So I'm looking at 4 times 120. Oh, and I'm going to squeak that in just right there at the bottom at 480 bucks. So when I go to write my note here, I'm going to say four orders of 50 wristbands would be cost $480.
So buying that really small package there is costing us almost five times as much, isn't it? So it says, what is the difference in cost between these? And so my answer is each of these things here. Okay. So that's why it's cheaper to buy in the bulk here. Alrighty, so that is how we are applying a piecewise function, in this case in terms of wristbands that we're purchasing. Think about that the next time you're on Amazon, huh? Until next time.